Hello and welcome to another of Seldor's World of Warcraft guides. This one is going to be on arcane PvP specking for mages. So we are going to jump right into it. Arcane Barrage, instant cast, very vital in PvP. Four second cooldown, so fairly often will it be ready. Nice long cast, fairly good damage. Arcane Specialization, increases arcane damage by 25%, very nice. And Mana Adept, this increases our damage based on how much mana we have left. So... Uh, because that will actually increase our damage, that makes mana conservation in a PvE, sorry, PvP scenario a much more vital and helpful thing to have. So, as we're going through this tree, keep in mind that these are PvP-related uh, talents that we will be focusing on. We want a PvP-focused build. Also, keep in mind, everything expressed in this video, or any of my videos for that fact, are merely suggestions as to what I feel would be a good mix of talents, i.e. what I have personally used. So I'm not saying, hey, try this out, I don't even know if it works. I have used them before, I have tested it out, whether it be on a target dummy or in a real scenario, or a BG or something, so I'm not just randomly telling you BS. I have tested it before, so keep that in mind as we go through this. And, again, it's only my suggestion. If you disagree, feel free to disagree. Go ahead and spec the way you want to spec. This is just my opinion. With that being said, let's hit the first row. Netherwind Presence, 3% haste, absolutely a wonderful thing in PvP. Faster you shoot out those spells, faster you can get back on the move. Improved Counterspell adds a sil silence effect to your Counterspell. Very nice if you fail to get the Counterspell off at the appropriate time. It is still going to silence them for four seconds if in the event that you know they're going to cast say a heal you can actually throw this on before they even start casting the heal so you can be a little preemptive with it we also have clear casting which allows us to shoot off free spells 10 percent of the time not a bad thing especially with mana adept however the improved counter spell is going to be much more helpful as well as the haste in a pve situation torment the weak very nice six percent free damage on slowed and snared targets keep in mind that is not just based off of your slows and snares that is based off of any slows and snares on the target so if he is entangling roots you get torment the weak if he is slowed by a frost mage you get torment the weak if he has curse of exhaustion from a warlock you get torment the weak bonus if he has infected wounds from a feral druid you get torment the weak bonus i think you get my point very 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 effective in pvp uh, invocation increases your damage when you successfully interrupt a spell. Keep in mind this only procs if you actually cast counterspell while they're casting the spell. That is what is classified as an interrupt. So, uh, very good. Maybe not as good as some of us were hoping, i.e. me. What would be really cool is if someone tries to cast a spell and you have prevented them from doing it, I that would... That would be an awesome way to put it, because then, if they try to cast a spell while they're silenced from counterspell, then you'll get invocation. If they try to cast a spell and you interrupt it with a sheep, then you'll get invocation. That would be much cooler, but the only way to get this proc currently as a mage is by actually timing counterspell properly, which sometimes in a PvP scenario does not occur as you are simply unlucky, bad at timing, or just trying to be a little preemptive with it. So debatable whether you want to pick it up however a very nice talent nonetheless if you choose to next we have improved arcane missiles increase the number of arcane missiles fired by your arcane missile spell pretty basic why that's a good thing more missiles means more damage unquestionable why that's good next we also have improved blink which causes you to gain increased run speed for a little bit after casting the blink spell as if blink wasn't nice enough teleporting you what is it 20 yards uh in a direction from where you are but now you have increased speed afterwards i'd recommend picking that up that's pretty nice Next row, we've got Presence of Mind, which causes your next spell under 10 seconds to be instant, which leads to Arcane Flows, reducing the duration of the cooldowns on some of your larger cooldown abilities, which is nice. We also have Missile Barrage, which increases the rate at which Arcane Missiles are fired. Obvious why that's a good thing, especially in a PvP scenario, and it does stack with the Haste bonus from Netherwind Presence. So, not only are you hasting your Arcane Missiles, but you're also hasting reduced cast time Arcane Missiles. It's very nice how it plays together. The faster you can pump out spells in PvP, the faster you can get back on the move, which means the faster you get away from the enemy. Very nice. Plus, more damage in a shorter amount of time. 
obviously a good thing. We also have Prismatic Cloak, which will increase DR by 6% and reduce Fade Time of Invisibility. In PvP, DR is very nice, especially when it's a gener generic nice round DR instead of, say, increases armor, which used to be an old mage talent that they removed from the game, which is nice. So 6% DR is nothing to laugh at. <clears throat> However, keep in mind you are in cloth, so it is not as appealing as one would think, yet still very nice to have, and the uh, basically no fade time on invisibility is pretty nice too when you're trying to, say, get away or make someone deselect you. It's a pretty nice effect, but I'm going to grab Presence of Mind and get to the next row since we spent two on Improved Blink previously. Uh, improved Polymorph causes the target you polymorph to be stunned for three seconds. After the polymorph is broken by damage, can only happen once every 10 seconds to each individual it's cast on. Self-explanatory why this is excellent, mages now have the ability to stun as an arcane mage. Very nice, very effective. If you are fighting a caster, I might suggest start with polymorph, hit with an arcane blast. He's now stunned for 3 seconds. That'll be enough for at least 1.5 more arcane blasts. Follow up with an improved counter spell. He's silenced for 4 seconds, then hit him with a couple more... Um, with a couple more arcane blasts and your you can sheep him again and break it with say an arcane barrage instant so he doesn't heal that much and what do you know he's stunned for another three seconds pretty nice combo right there pretty self-explanatory why this is an excellent talent being able to stun and lock down an opponent is always a good thing uh, we also have arcane tactics tactics pardon which is three percent increased damage for yourself and every friendly target within a hundred yards grouped with you Self-explanatory why that is good, I believe. 3% increased damage means they die 3% faster. They die 3% faster, you take 3% less DPS from them beating on you. Pretty obvious why that's good. Next, we have Encanter's Absorption, a vital PvP arcane talent, in my opinion, uh, simply for primarily the second ability, but the first of this talent is not bad either. When you absorb damage with your Mana Shield or Mage Ward, you'll get 20% increased damage based on how much damage you took uh, absorbed, I should say, how much damage you absorbed with either of those two abilities for 10 seconds. Self-explanatory why that's good. More damage means they die faster, means they have less time to kill you. Obvious. Uh, but the second ability is what is really excellent. When your mana shield is destroyed, all enemies within 6 yards get knocked back 12 yards. So, not only do we now as a mage have a stun and a silence and an interrupt, but now we have a knockback. Wow, Blizzard is loving arcane mages right now. Um, this knockback is pretty cool. The only way I could see them improving this somehow is uh, adding a slow effect to the knockback, which would be absolutely ridiculously OP. <laughs> um, Self-explanatory why it's good helps your survivability. You should be using mage, uh, sorry, mana shield and mage ward. Anyway, in PvP, P yes, PvP scenarios, because that'll help your overall survivability, which is very vital and important. Finally, in this row, we do have Improved Arcane Explosion, which reduces the threat of Arcane Explosion by 80%. Threat is overall completely unrelated to PvP scenarios. However, it does reduce the GCD of Arcane Explosion by 5.5 seconds, which is nice if, say, you panic when you have a Rogue or Feral Cat on you. However, I personally don't. If you do, having this might um, be helpful, because if you start spamming that when you panic... It might be enough to deter them from backing away from you. I personally tend to not panic when that happens and simply blink away. So I'm not taking this. If you do, I would recommend you take it. This is one of those things where it's completely play style whether you take this or not. Next we have Arcane Potency. When you get clear casting or presence of mind, you have a 15% uh, increased crit chance on your next two damaging spells. We also have slow, which is self-explanatory why it's good. Reduces their move speed, ranged attack speed, and casting time. Sorry, increases attack speed and casting time, and reduces move speed. Self-explanatory why it's good. Also, you need it to get Nether Vortex, which basically double casts. Every time you cast Arcane Blast, you also apply slow to the enemy, free of charge, free of GCD. Only GCD you suffer from is the one for casting Arcane Blast. So, self-explanatory why it's good, it will make sure that you gain the Torment the Weak bonus regardless of whether someone else is hitting it and slowing it, slash staring it, or not. So, now we have two points to reach the next row. You can either grab two of three Prismatic Cloak, two of three Arcane Concentration, really 
two points anywhere you feel appropriate. Again, as I've said in all my previous videos, there are customization points, and the key to a good spec as being a good player is customizing your own talent tree to fit your playstyle. If you do not customize your own talent tree to fit your own playstyle, it will feel abnormal and blocky, and therefore you will not be able to do as optimal as you would with, say, a spec catered to your personal playstyle. My playstyle is definitely not to spam Arcane Explosion. Uh, I generally don't use invisibility. The DR would be nice, though. Reducing the cooldown on these abilities is pretty good, so I'll probably do two of two Arcane Flows, especially if you glyph for Evocation. If you reduce the cooldown of Evocation by two minutes, not only will you be able to get your mana up if you manage to survive a very long, intensive fight, but the glyphed Evocation will also give you health back, which is a very vital PvP glyph, so I'd recommend taking this regardless of playstyle. Also, the 25% uh, reduced cooldown on many of your primary cooldowns is going to be excellent. Next, we have Focus Magic and Improved Mana Gem. Improved Mana Gem increases spell power by 2% of maximum mana for 20 sec sorry, 10 seconds. After you use your Mana Gem, Mana Gem is going to be used fairly often in PvP in the event that you get into long fight scenarios such as arenas. Also, Focus Magic, more useful if you run with buddies in PvP, as I frequently do. Um, this is still useful even if you pretty much pug, which I do a lot too, your BGs. Because uh, you can throw it on any caster and pretty much wherever they are, if they crit, you're good. The only issue is you don't know when they die or not unless you have their raid frame up. Uh, I would recommend taking both of these, as I personally use my mana gem when I am low on mana in a PvP scenario, as most mages do. And having focus magic is always nice, especially when I run with my buddies who, say, are on their priest and warlock, etc., it's nice to be able to give them a buff, which in turn gives you a buff. Uh, with that, we have two points to spend. Again, these two points should wherever you feel appropriate. I'm going to go two of three Arcane Concentration, unlocking the final ability, Arcane Power, which is nice. It is a two-minute cooldown reduced by Arcane Flows, and when activated, it will increase damage done by 20%, but also increase mana cost by 10%. It lasts 15 seconds, self-explanatory why increased Damage output is good, however, be aware that the 10% um, more mana cost is going to eat into your mana adept mastery, because the more mana you use, the less bonus you're getting from that mastery. Um, so that leaves you with 10 points. Uh, I really, really, really recommend if you follow my specs to the letter the way I do them, in this case, definitely fill out Arcane Concentration and grab Arcane Potency as extra crit is very, very nice in PvP, especially with the revamp of Brazil that came out with Cataclysm. It no longer reduces the chance you are crit, however, just provides DR overall. So, the 15% uh, crit chance is actually 15% increased crit chance. What do you know? And with that, that leaves Invocation unfilled, Prismatic Cloak unfilled, and Improved Arcane Explosion unfilled. Feel free to fill any of those to fit your playstyle. If you are very good at timing counter spells, I suggest you take Invocation. I, however, am only so-so. If you panic or simply like to use Arcane Explosion in BGs, then take Improved Arcane Explosion. If you depend on that invisibility to escape, or you feel you need the extra 6% DR simply because you're short on Resil or some other reason, then take Prismatic Cloak. Nothing is stopping you from taking those. This is only my suggestion. I personally do not feel I need those over, say, something else I may need to pick, so I'm going to wait on filling those in. I may go back and backfill them. Let's find out. We have Master of Elements, which refunds 30% of the base mana cost when I crit of with any spell. Burning Soul, I would suggest definitely taking regardless of preference, as reducing the pushback from damaging attacks while casting is always an excellent thing as a caster. Um, this will reduce it by 70%. Uh, excellent. Obviously why it's excellent. Um, Improve Fire Blast, this uh, I can actually understand someone picking up in a PvP spec, as you can lead to impact in the second row, <clears throat> which would result in having an extra stun. Yes, uh, potentially having an extra stun. 
that would be an interesting location for your four points. I could see it working out really, really well. I could also see it working out not so well. Um, it would be an interesting proc to see an arcane mage having. If you feel you can pull it off, I say go for it. I personally did not use that spec. So I'm going to pass on that, but that is a very interesting prospect. I suggest you try it out if you feel you would like an extra uh, potential stun, or if you frequently use both Arcane Barrage and Fire Blast, but I usually depend on my Arcane Barrage and pass on Fire Blast. In the Frost Tree, we have Early Frost. Shouldn't be using Frost Bolt. We have Shatter. Um, I didn't take this in the spec that I tested out, however, it is quite interesting to play with if you frequently use Frost Nova, however... Uh, you're only getting half the benefit from this as the other half is uh, helping Frostbolt, so probably don't want to pick it up. Uh, free 3% crit from Piercing Ice, self-explanatory why that is good. That leaves you with one point, which means a partially filled talent, which means Seth is going to be an unhappy camper, but that will be how it is. Uh, at this point, I would take this, and I would recommend, if you're following this spec and you just kind of want to do whatever with the last point, I'd recommend either one of three Prismatic Cloak for at least 2% DR, or one of two Invocation, which is actually what I went with, as having the extra damage when you do successfully interrupt is a very nice thing to have. Um, I personally do not like relying on my interrupt skills, as I, as everyone else I'm sure does, makes mistakes. So... I do one of two there, simply because I don't trust myself with timing. There is an infinite combination of talent points and locations you could set up with this spec to customize it however you'd like. This is simply my suggestion as to what I found to work fairly well in a PvP scenario. Uh, please take this with a grain of salt. If you have any opinions on this that are not rude and are simply polite, such as, oh, I find having the extra point in Invocation instead of 3% crit in Frost to be more helpful, because da-da-da-da-da. Thank you for putting that information under this video. Thank you very much. Please do so. Please don't beat people over the head with it. If you disagree with anything in there, fine. If you feel you need to state that you disagree with something in there, please leave it just at that. I disagree with this because XYZ. Period. You don't need to beat people over the head with the fact that you disagree with someone's video, folks. Anyway, this has been my suggestion as to Arcane PvP Mage Specking in World of Warcraft Cataclysm. This has been Sethledor on the server Blade's Edge in the Guild Sacrilege on the character Arctic Shatter on the topic of PvP Arcane Mage Specking. This is a 35-3-3 build. Thank you for watching. This has been previously tested. If you enjoyed this video, please like, thumb up, whatever it's called now, favorite, subscribe, recommend me to your friends, and if you have anything to say about this spec that is not rude, obscene, etc., please do so under the comment section below. I do indeed greatly appreciate comments, and I do, in fact, read them, because you will see my replies on other videos. So, if there is something I made a mistake on clerically in here, please point that out. If there is something you feel you need to say about this spec, feel free to do so. Just don't be rude about it. Anyway... Thank you for watching. I enjoyed making this video for you all, and I really can't make wait to make another one. Thank you again, and I will see you guys next time.